clickety-clack, clickety-clack, a boxcar on a railroad track. I take goods there, I bring goods back, a boxcar on a railroad track. Clickety-clickety-clack. Boxcar 20862, that's me. The other cars call me old-timer. Not that I'm really so old, but in business you become a veteran in a hurry. Now Junior here, he's just joined up. Hardly dry behind the ears. Junior was coupled on to me back in Topeka, Kansas. He doesn't appreciate it yet, but he belongs to the Southern Railway System with better than 8,000 miles of track that spreads out to every part of the Southland and points beyond. Like I said, Junior coupled on to me in Topeka, and we're rooted by way of severe yards, Knoxville, Tennessee, en route to Columbia, South Carolina. Right now, we are in Memphis, Tennessee, just leaving Forest Yard in the dark of night. Two of more than 100 cars that make up this train. Early morning now, and we're going through Alabama. Alabama, the state the stars fell on. Probably just came down to admire the view. So long, Alabama, back into Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee, City Co. Yard. Drop some cars here, pick up some others. Southern is expanding this yard, a sign of progress. When next you come through here, Junior, terminal time will be cut way down. Rolling on through Sweetwater Valley. And then on to Knoxville, Tennessee, one of the South's industrial centers. Look at this train we're part of, Junior. More than a mile from caboose to the four-unit diesel, pulling with the strength of 6,000 horses, carrying the nation's goods, serving the Southland, taking farm products to the city, raw materials to the factories, finished goods to the people who will use them. That's a big and important job, Junior. Yet getting business and holding it depends more and more on our ability to give good service between shipping and receiving points. Southern Railway stepped out ahead by replacing steam locomotives with diesels, by installing heavier and stronger track material, by improving their signaling, by bringing in greater variety of devices to speed communication. And now the big job of cutting down terminal standing time, eliminating delays. And in just a little while now, Junior, you're going to see how Southern Railway is tackling this problem. Severe Yard. A 
push-button job that represents years of planning and an investment of three million dollars. And this is just one of several in the southern system. There are others and more on their way. It's really three yards and one, over three miles long and covers an area of 11 and a half million square feet. There's the receiving yard with 12 tracks capable of handling about 1,200 cars. The classification yard, 46 tracks which hold 2,200 cars. And the forwarding yard with 10 tracks that can handle 950 cars. There is a car repair yard car cleaning track, a transfer shed for cars carrying less than carload lots, stock pens to feed and water and root livestock, adequate icing facilities for servicing refrigerator cars, and a lot more. Here is a sketch that shows how all the pieces fit together. This is the receiving yard, the classification yard, and the forwarding yard, three miles from one end to the other. Here is the diesel repair shop, car repair yard, car cleaning track, transfer sheds, stock pens, icing facilities, all arranged for maximum efficiency. And here's how the whole thing works out for us, Junior. Right now, we are about two miles this side of Sevier. We hit a warning inductor, and it rings a bell in the telegraph office at the yard. The operator knows we're coming and checks with the terminal train master to find out what track we can come in on. Train 52 with 150 cars is on the bell. The lighted numbers show the train master what tracks in the receiving yard are clear. Okay, Jake, put him in number seven. And here we are, pulling into receiving yard track number seven. Now the diesels are uncoupled and head for the underpass. We get our first inspection right here. Car inspectors make a walking inspection and open journal boxes and they're left open for oiling later. The air bleeders release our brakes. And here comes the hump engine to couple to us and shove us over the hump on our way to the classification track. Twenty-two eighty-one on track number seven, ready to shove. All right, twenty-two eighty-one. You got a green board. Shove out. This means we can shove out at six miles per hour. Double yellow, four miles per hour. Single yellow, two miles per hour, our humping speed. That yellow gadget across the track is there to signal when anything drags too low. When there's trouble, the board turns red. A 
bell rings and the car inspector pits and the trouble is correct. Why, Junior, looks like it was you dragging your heels. Now we roll past the car inspector pits for another inspection of our running gear. Then Big Squirt, the automatic oiler. Now you see why the journal boxes were left open. We're really getting oil. Next comes the pin puller. His switch list tells him just which cars to uncouple. You and I, Junior, are going to the same place, so we'll stay coupled together. And here's the peg shooter. With his air gun, he places a cellulose wedge that holds the knuckle open. Later, the impact of coupling crushes the peg and it drops out. Next comes the hump conductor. As he punches the track numbers called for on his switch list, all switches automatically line up, leading to the proper classification track. Here we go over the hump. It's all downhill now, but there's no chance to see how fast you can go. Operation Big Squeeze Holds you down to a safe pace all the way. First, we're slowed down by a scale retarder so that all of us that need to be weighed are on the scale long enough for our weight to register. Then there's the retarder operator. If we're going too fast after we leave the scale, he slows us down again with the master retarder. With the help of radar equipment located alongside the track and these meters, he can tell our speed as we go past him. Then using the group retarders, he'll keep us at the safe coupling speed of four miles per hour as we roll into the classification tracks. Here's another nifty junior. These gadgets are skates put on the rails of each track to stop the first car that comes onto it from rolling too far. And it keeps the cars that follow from pushing the whole block out of the end of the track. It's quite a sight. In one, two, up to eight cars in one cut. Here's how classification works. Each one of the cars is colored to indicate a classification according to destination. Because the car... Time was when we'd spend the whole night waiting to be cleared. But now, just as quickly as the cars are classified, the paperwork is done. In this revolving rack, there's a pigeonhole. For each track in the classification yard, 46 in all. The clerk racks the way bill as the cars pass before him.
In a matter of minutes, after the last car is classified, the clerk has figured out exactly how much tonnage there is in each track. Then the waybills are microfilmed, so there'll be a permanent record of each bill. In this single roll of film, there's a 24-hour record of some 3,500 cars. The clerk figures the tonnage, gives this information to the yardmaster. Jim, let's get 29 and set it over on the caboose in number one. Roger, we're going to pull 29. Okay, oh. The way they classify cars here at Severe, greater emphasis can be placed on blocking. And here's how it's done. The block of cars that will leave the train last is pulled first and coupled to the caboose. Then the block that will leave next to the last. and so on till the train is completed. The last block to go on will be the first block off. You can say goodnight to Severe, Junior. We're ready to roll. Listen to those diesel draws. Yes, sir, Junior. That new operation at Severe is really something out of tomorrow for use today. It only took us two hours and 50 minutes to get through here, and it used to take more than twice that long. That's where all this imagineering that's the right combination of imagination and engineering. Pays off. Time saved at Severe is cumulative. It's like a rolling snowball. Trains now leaving Severe Yard need little or no switching at other points on the railway. That saves time, and time is precious to shippers. Too bad it's so dark out here, Junior. Can't really appreciate the view. Now, if we knew the magic word, abracadabra, well, what do you know? North Carolina and the French Broad River I was telling you about. Mighty lovely stretch of country. We're in Asheville. We'll set off the first two blocks here and then be on our way again. Now we got a little more climbing to do to get to the top of Saluda Mountain. Diesels reverse their generators, using them as dynamic brakes. The generators don't like it. Listen to them wail. Yet, transportation is a mighty fascinating business and we can be mighty proud to be a part of an industry that doesn't throw in the towel when things get really rugged. The men who call our signals have to have intestinal fortitude. They have to think, fight, and sure enough work to 
do the big job that only railroading can do. When things get really rough, like snow, ice, hurricanes, or a war, do they make us railroads the first team? In the meantime, we have to dream up things like severe yards so we can stay in the game. You know, maybe it's better that way. Cause like that wise old fella said, the hen that scratches the hardest is the best fed. Well, we're nearing the end of our journey together, Junior. Coming into Columbia, South Carolina. End of the trip. Tomorrow, we'll be on the go again. Cause we're Southern Railway boxcars, only when we're on the move. That, Junior, is railroad.